iPhone is a revolutionary product and combines three products into one. It's a great mobile phone, the best iPod we've ever created, and it delivers the internet in your pocket with the best email, web browsing, search, and maps applications ever on a mobile phone. At the heart of the iPhone is a revolutionary multi-touch user interface that lets you easily control everything with just the touch of a finger. Over the next 20 minutes or so, I'd like to give you a brief tour of some of the amazing features that make iPhones so revolutionary. One of the first things you'll notice about the iPhone is its simple design. On the left side of the iPhone, you'll find a volume up and down button and the silent ringer switch. On the top is the sleep-wake button and the headset jack. On the bottom is an iPod connector, a speaker, and the mic. To unlock the iPhone, press the sleep-wake button, then drag the slider to the right. The slider prevents iPhone from being accidentally turned on while it's in your pocket. This is the iPhone's home screen. From here, you can begin using any one of the 16 amazing applications just by tapping on a button such as SMS, Maps, or Weather. Along the bottom of the home screen are the buttons to quickly access the phone, mail, Safari, and iPod features. And this is the home button. Pressing the home button at any time from anywhere brings you back to the home screen. You can lock your iPhone by pressing the sleep-wake button. iPhone will still receive calls, and you can listen to music and adjust the volume, but nothing will happen if you touch the screen. To completely power off iPhone, press and hold the sleep-wake button for a few seconds. Then drag the red slider to confirm. The iPhone is a revolutionary mobile phone. Making a call is as simple as touching a name. And because iTunes automatically syncs with the address book you already use on your PC or Mac, you have all of your contacts, phone numbers, street addresses, email addresses, and more with you wherever you go. More importantly, you can use all this information inside other iPhone applications like Google Maps, Safari, and Mail. To make a phone call, start by tapping on the phone button. There are five buttons along the bottom of the screen so that you can quickly access Favorites, Recents, your contacts, an old-fashioned keypad, and visual voicemail. You can easily scroll through all of your contacts by flicking up or down, or you can drag your finger along the alphabet on the right to quickly jump to a particular letter. To call John Appleseed, I'd locate him in my address book, tap his name, then simply tap on the number to make the call. It's as easy as that. Anytime you're on a call, you can tap mute to mute your line, tap keypad to bring up the numeric keypad, and tap speaker to use the speakerphone. To put a call on hold, tap the hold button. You can also create a simple conference call by tapping add call, which brings up your contact list so you can tap a second number to call. If you need to look up a number in your address book while you're on a call, or any information on a contact, you can do so by tapping contacts. While on a call, you can also tap the home button to access other iPhone applications. To return, tap here. And when you're done with the call, simply tap End Call. Favorites is a great way to speed dial someone with just one tap. To add John Appleseed to my favorites list, I tap the plus button, then his name. You can also edit your favorites list by tapping on the Edit button. For example, if I wanted to reorder my list, I touch to the right of the name and then drag it to the position I want. And if I want to delete a number, I tap the red circle next to a name, then tap Remove. Recents gives you a list of all the dialed, received, and missed calls. Missed calls are displayed in red, and tapping on the Missed button shows a list of just the missed calls. To return a call, just tap on the name. Tap the blue arrow to see all the contact information for that person. To dial a number the old-fashioned way, tap the keypad button and dial the number on the numeric keypad. If I want to add this number to my address book, I simply tap the plus button, then create new contact. Add in the new information and I'm all set.
Wouldn't it be nice to listen to your fourth voicemail without having to listen to the three before it? Wouldn't it also be nice to see the names of the people who've left you a message? Well, with iPhone and Visual Voicemail, you can. To access Visual Voicemail, tap the Voicemail button. You can listen to any voicemail in any order just by tapping on it. Hi, Bob, the blue Sam, dot lets you know which ones have not yet been call. heard. If you missed a section, sure. you can easily scroll back and play it again. This is Anna. When you get a chance, can you give me a call? I have a couple ideas on the new brochure. To return a call from a voicemail, tap the call back button. And now I'm calling Anna. Hello, this is Anna. Hey Anna, we're doing a short demo for the iPhone. Do you have a minute to help us out? Sure, I'd be happy to. If you're already on a call when a second call comes in, you can choose to ignore the call, or you can put the first call on hold and answer the second. Hi Eric, I've got Anna on the other line. Can you hold on a second? Sure. To alternate between two callers, tap Swap. And if I want to create a quick conference call, it's as easy as tapping Merge Calls, and now I'm talking with both Anna and Eric. Hi, Eric. Hi, Anna. Hi, Bob. Hey, guys. The iPhone is the best iPod we've ever created. It has a beautiful 3.5-inch screen that's perfect for displaying your pictures, video podcasts, TV shows, and movies. To use the iPod features, just tap the iPod button. Just like in the phone application, there are five buttons along the bottom, and these let you navigate your music library by playlists, artists, or songs, as well as easily get to your videos and more. To see your music sorted by artist, tap on the Artist button, then scroll through to find a favorite album, and then a song. I'm so happy to see the album's complete track list, tap here, then tap on any song to switch the track that's playing. Another great way to look at your music library is with CoverFlow, just like in iTunes. CoverFlow lets you enjoy your entire music library using the album cover art. To use CoverFlow, all you have to do is rotate iPhone 90 degrees into a landscape orientation. The iPhone's accelerometer senses the change and automatically switches into CoverFlow. Just flick your finger to the left and right to find the album you want, tap on it, then tap on the song you want to listen to. And that's CoverFlow. Okay, now let's take a look at video. Tap the video button to scroll through a list of all your movies, TV shows, music videos, and video podcasts. To watch a movie, just tap on it. Movies and video play in landscape, so you want to rotate your iPhone. You can double tap to see the movie in theatrical aspect ratio. If you want to zoom into full screen, double tap again. Tap once on the display to bring up the on-screen controls. Tap again to put them away. And that's video on the iPhone. Tap more to see the other ways you can view your music library. You can also change the buttons you see along the bottom. First, tap Edit, then just drag the button to the location you want. For example, if you listen to a lot of podcasts and want to get to them faster, just drag Podcasts and replace Songs. The stereo headset that comes with the iPhone features a microphone with an integrated button that allows you to answer and end calls easily. It can also be used to control audio and video playback. While using the iPod features, for example, a single click pauses or resumes playback, and a double click advances one track in a playlist. If a call comes in while you're listening to music, the volume will fade out and the iPhone will pause the music. A single click on the headphone button will answer the call, and when you're done with the call, Click once more to hang up. The music will fade back in right where you left off.